Bible, God says we're here um, preaching the good news of Jesus out here in um, North Wales, Carnarvon, and the gospel is about to be preached, amen, with power, according to the will of God, and I'm converting your prayers right now, amen, um, right now I'm converting your prayers, that you begin to pray for me as I'm beginning to do the biddings of the Father, amen. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I'm just about to set up and put on some music and lift up the name of Jesus in this place. It's going to be a very quick one, and then I'm off to Bangor, and then I'll be in Liverpool tonight. Amen. The gospel will be preached in Liverpool tonight. Amen. So you can check me out. I'll be preaching the gospel in Liverpool after preaching at some point. Yeah, from Canada, I'll be from Bangor, from Bangor, off to Liverpool. So guys, um, pray for me that the word of the Lord will have free course. Amen. That the people of Canada will hear the word of the Lord and say, you know, no one believe, but we pray that men will receive their grace to believe in the Lord Jesus and what Jesus has done for them. So guys, just keep on praying, lift up Canaan, that the word of the Lord will bring forth in their hearts, that every heart in hearts will hear of the good news of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So just watch and pray. Hallelujah. Watch and pray. Let me see everything is about to start off. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. They might, they might. Yeah, you're not allowed to preach or do some basking, but I'm not basking. So, I don't know the Lord is in this place. What we're going to do is begin to break the atmosphere with some music. And let the Father's will be done. Amen. So, just pray for me. We shall have a very
Thank you. 
good news that you don't need to die a sinner but die in Christ and receive forgiveness of sin. Today, the Lord is commanding all men everywhere. In Canaan, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is here. The kingdom of heaven is here. And we have a responsibility and a duty in order to enter the kingdom. We must repent and believe in the Lord Jesus. Repentance is not a religious duty, responsibility, but it's an act, an expression to turn away from sin and follow Jesus. Today, in the name of Jesus, we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, not to give you a religion, but to bring you to a relationship with Jesus Christ, because he died for you. For God so loved the world can live in, that he sent his only begotten son. He didn't give us a religion, but he gave us Jesus. Many of you celebrate Christmas, the birth of the Messiah, Jesus. You celebrate Easter, the death of the Messiah, Jesus. Because it's in his death, burial, and resurrection. It is in his death. It's in his death, his burial, and resurrection that we find peace. And these were expressions of God's love. These were expressions of God's desire to save men from the judgment of their sin. Friends in Canaan, there's a, there's a word in the Bible that says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And that is why today is good news because we're preaching the death, burial, and resurrection which is the gift that God is dispensing to the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus. His death was to pay the debt of our sins. Religion could not make a man pay the debt of his sin, except he has faith in Jesus. He's the only one that could pay the debt of our sins. He's the only one that could provide remission for sins. Jesus, the only one that could grant men forgiveness of sin. Jesus, the only one that could reconcile us back to God. Now, if you are here today, you don't believe there is a God, but yet you celebrate Christmas, like the Bible declares, that we have become fools. You don't believe there is God, that even though you know there is a power, because friends in Canaan, every for every design, there is a designer. Therefore, if there is a creation, then it's a day in the name of Jesus. God is calling all men and women and children in Canaan to repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Today, I want you to consider in who this Jesus is all about. So much so that on 25th December, people lit up Christmas trees and Christmas lights and they sit by the trees but the essence of all these things is to reveal the person but you see your christmas trees and your christmas life has filled the person of god brought to humanity to save men from their sins you see the person of jesus has been filled by religious doctrines and interpretation our sciences are now failing and covering the person of christ who was sent to save us from our sins. And today, in the name of Jesus, with all humility, I'm here to unveil that truth. I'm here not to bring you a religion, but to bring you to the Christ. You see, we're all going, we're all going through crisis. We went through a crisis, a global crisis, a pandemic crisis. A man died of coronavirus. Men die because death is promised to everyone. We're all mortal men, but we're mortal men that have a spirit that is immortal. And we'll all live to forever because you have a mortal being in us that has a body. Many of you who are scientists and Darwinists and atheists believe that you are stardust. You came from the dust and it's in the dust you will end. My friends, you have a soul. We are living in dust and that is why we're just we're just zombies because we're living in the body but we're not there we're not connected what makes us living zombies 
is because we've rejected God. We rejected the one true God and His Son whom He has sent. The one true God did not give us a religion, He didn't give us Islam. He didn't give us Mormonism, Darwinism, Catholicism, and all the other religions known under heaven by men. But he gave us his son. You see, this God, who is a spirit, he came down, became a man. Many of you have asked questions, if God is so good, why are bad things happening to good people? But friends, we forget that by one man, sin came into the world. And true sin came evil. True sin came religion. True sin came pedophile, came rapists, came gangsters, came murderers, came liars, came whoremongers, came all the evil things that we know. True sin came coronavirus. True sin came guns. I've come to realize that guns don't kill people, but people use guns to kill people. People have used religion and even the Bible to divide people. But the purpose of the Bible and the purpose of Christ coming was to unite humanity together. The purpose of the gospel was for God to reveal his love. He could not reveal his love being a spirit, so he became a man. The Bible declares that greater love has no man. No man on the earth has expressed the best ultimate love. No religion can express this love. Therefore, God decided that religion was not good enough to express his love that he left his throne about. He left the praise of angels and came and became a baby. He lived like a man for 30 years. He lived, the Bible says, at Christ Jesus, lent obedience by the things he suffered. He suffered like a man. Went through all the pain so he could intercede for us. And friends, the Bible declares that the Lord Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father and is making intercession for you and I. The Bible says the days of our ignorance God has waked. Friends, and today God has waked every evil, every sin we've committed by today as the gospel is being preached in Canaan. He's commanding all men everywhere to repent. He's commanding all men to draw to him. Because he has a gift for them. He's commanding all men everywhere to come to him. Even those who are heavy laden and depressed. He says, come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Our money cannot give us rest. Religious attendance membership identity cannot give us eternal rest our eternal rest is found in jesus our eternal rest is found in a relationship with his son yeshua and that is why we're sounding the alarm of the blast of the shofar because friends the bible reveals in thessalonians that the lord himself people of canaan would descend from heaven with a voice of an archangel and with a trumpet and by the blast of the trumpet of the coming of the Yeshua HaMashiach the Lord Jesus those who are dead in Christ not dead Muslims not dead Catholics not dead Baptists but those who are dead in Christ will be resurrected from the grave translated to me the Lord in the air because he said behold I come with clouds of heaven with glory and with great power the Bible says all eyes will see him. They will see the piercings on his palm, the piercing on his feet, the piercings on his side. It will be revealed to humanity that the person whom they wore the cross about will now be revealed to men. You see, I was that guy who wore the cross, but I never carried the cross. I wore the cross and never carried the cross because I was not willing to deny my soul. I was not willing to deny my evil lifestyle, my lying lifestyle, my fornicating lifestyle, my fraud lifestyle. There are many lifestyles that were evil that I did that today I'm not worthy to live. But Jesus saw it fit to give me another chance. 
The Bible says the wages of our sin is death. It's just not just a physical death, but it's eternal death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is not a Christmas gift. The gift of God is eternal life. You see, Santa Claus will give you a Christmas gift, and all Christmas gift expires in one year. But when God wanted to give men and women and children a canadian gift, he gave them an everlasting gift, an all perishable gift. That is not like Santa's gift. It's not a Christmas gift. You see, Jesus is not a Christmas gift. He was an eternal gift given to those who would turn away from their sins, call on his name, and believe in him. Jesus, the eternal gift that gives life. Jesus, the eternal gift to humanity that remits the sins of sinners. See, Jesus comes looking for sinners like you and I to save them from the judgment to come. Maybe many of you are afraid for a coming pandemic. But what is more fearful, what is more fearful, my friend, is a person who is on the wrong side of God because nobody can save you. You see, you can be on the wrong side of the devil and you can be saved from the judgment and the wrath of the enemy. You can be saved from the wrath of devils. But when a person is on the wrong side and is against God, who can save him from God himself? And today, the very thing that can save you from the judgment of God, the wrath of God, the penalties of your sins, dwelling in hell for eternity, is Jesus. He's the one that saves you, not only to give you peace for not going to hell, but you become a child of the living God. People of Canaan, today is the day of salvation. It is not a day of condemnation. I come not condemning men, women and children, but I come preaching the salvation to deliver men from the condemnation of this age. Today is the day of salvation, Canaan. And God is commanding all men everywhere, run to Jesus. Jesus said, come unto me, O ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus gives rest. I could not give you rest. I could not forgive you of your sins. I could not remit your sins. Even if I died for Canaan, it will still not give them eternal life. You see, Jesus comes and he's better than your religion. It's better than your Catholicism, your Buddhism, your Darwinism, your Baptism, and all your Mormonism, your, your atheism, because all of these things don't give men eternal life. Jesus is not your man. It doesn't make men escape hell. See, but Jesus comes and he gives you peace. He comes and he reconciles you back to your Creator. He comes and he gives you an, a heavenly inheritance. He comes and he redeems you. He comes and he makes you a new creation. He comes, he comes, he comes and he blots out every ordinances, every evil decree that is against you. And he nails it to the cross. He comes and he pays the debts of our sins, which none of us could pay. Many of you have found ways to pay for the debts of your sins to your benevolence, you give to the poor, you feed the hungry, you give shelter to the homeless, but you see with all these religious activity, it still doesn't give us eternal life, it might make you a good man or a good woman before men and women and children, but before God, it's like guilty rights, the Lord says that your righteous deeds, your good works, your benevolence, your religious devotions are all like filthy rights. And that is why he who knew no sin became sin for the children, the men, the women of Canaan, that they may be the righteousness of God. It's when we repent and believe in Jesus that our religious devotion is approved by God. It's approved by God because we receive his righteousness. See, we cannot renew our hearts by being good. We renew our hearts by turning away from sin and believing in Jesus. The moment we walk in repentance and faith in Jesus, God begins to do a work in our hearts. 
that work that God does in our heart doesn't give us a religious boldness. It gives, it gives us a relational boldness. We receive the boldness that can stand in the days of adversity. That can stand when there is a pandemic. That can stand when there is persecution. That can stand when there is hatred. When men rejects you. The Bible declares that do not be surprised. Just as they hated Jesus, they will hate you. Because in the last day, many will hate men who preach the gospel. Women who preach about Jesus. Because all they had was a religion. My friends in Canaan, we're here calling you to Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible says no one comes to the Father except by Him. Many have sought ways to get to God. Some are building spaceship to get to God. Some are becoming Muslim to get to God. Some are becoming Catholics to get to God. Some believe in, in purgatory so they have a priest to pray for their parents so that they can get to God. But Jesus is that way that gets us to Him. Jesus is that truth that lets us know about Him. Jesus is that life that makes us have his life to live the life of him that created the heavens and the earth. And today, friends, we're here pleading with you. We're here sounding the alarm of his coming. The Bible says again that the Lord Jesus, who was born in a manger, nailed to the cross, resurrected from the grave, and is ascended on high, he's coming back again. The Bible says he will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels coming with flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and those who did not obey his gospel the gospel of Jesus therefore men will be punished with everlasting destruction untemnable destruction unending destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power there is a coming unending destruction that is coming worse than the coronavirus that shut the whole world there is coming unending destruction from the presence of god that is why today god is saying to cadaver the days of your ignorance in religion in lies in atheism in darwinism in mormonism in krishna in the new age in sorcery in divination the days of those ignorant I have went, but today he's commanding all men everywhere to repent. Repentance is not a prayer, it's not a Hail Mary's prayer. Repentance is a turning away from sin and a pursuit for Jesus Christ. It's a turning away from evil and a pursuit for Jesus. Today, my friend, is a day of salvation. And God is designed that all men everywhere will repent and call on his name. Today, it is that day. Call on the name of Jesus that you can be saved. Friends in Canada, life is short, but eternity is long. The question I ask you that is that many of you have home insurances, insurance for your cars, insurance for your home. But when it comes, we preach the gospel of Jesus that your souls will be insured. We preach the gospel of Jesus that you'll be reconciled back to God. We preach the gospel of Jesus that you will be saved. We preach the gospel of Jesus that you will have your sins remitted. Today, it is a day of salvation. And God decides that all men everywhere will come to Jesus. You will not need to come to me. Maybe you have a problem with black people. But that's fine. I want you to follow Jesus. Because I'm a sinner. It's because I went to him. Thank God we serve a Messiah that's not a racist. But we serve a Christ who came to save the whole human race, shed his blood for the human race. For God so loved the human race that he gave us his son, that whosoever believes in him 
not because he was white, not because he was black, green or yellow, but believe because he was the son of God. The God man on earth to bring men back to God. The son of God became the son of man that the sons of men will become sons of the living God. Today, it is a day of salvation. And God is desiring all men everywhere to repent and come to Jesus. Repent and call on his name. You see, the name of Jesus heals the sick. The Bible says that in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. You see, Jesus, the Bible says that his name, power is bound. See, Jesus is the truth. And so when you preach the truth of Jesus, which fights against sin and eliminates sin, people get angry. Demons begin to manifest in men. And I'm asking myself, how can demons find expression in the bodies of men? The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, there are many out here today. The reason why you will not accept or receive Jesus in your life is because of the lack of the glory of God. The glory of God can be expressed this way. It's a hunger for God. It's a hunger to know God more. There is a hunger. A hunger for the hearing of the word of God. A hunger to know God. A desire for the word. But it comes to a generation that hates God. That doesn't want to know God. And the Bible says he's coming with flaming fire. Taking vengeance of those who decided not to know God, who did not obey the gospel of Jesus. Friends, today is the day of salvation. And God desires every man everywhere to come to him. He says, come to me, let us register together. He says, though your sins be as scarlet, they can be as white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, they can be as white as wool. God wants to reason with you. God did not send me, or did he send his son into the world to condemn the world. But I drew his son, through the expression that was revealed to humanity 2,000 years ago. Man will find love in his death, his burial, and resurrection. They'll find love in the mercy and the goodness of God that has saved the wretch like us, like me. God is still in the business of giving men a second chance or more chances. You see, friends, the only thing that can remit sins and eliminate sin is Jesus. He's the answer. He's the solution to the crisis of this world. He's the answer. When there was a coronavirus, he was the answer. Because religion could not deal with the pandemic. Because all religious buildings were shut down, but heaven wasn't shut down. Men were still receiving the person Jesus. But religious stores were shut down. Religious activities were shut down. But prayer and intercession was not shut down. Men could still go and bend their knees. When COVID has spread over the whole world, men could still call on the name of the Lord Jesus and be saved. The Bible declares that whosoever will call on the name of Jesus, they will be saved. Today, it's not too late. If you still have breath under your nostril, it's not too late to turn away from sin and run to Jesus. Can ever today, it's not too late to call on Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and say, Lord, I need you. 
He gives you the life that gives one peace. He gives you the life. He gives one life that gives one joy. Friends, in the book of Romans, it says, The kingdom of God, it is not meat and drink. But you're from the United Kingdom, let me put it this way. The kingdom of God is not fish and chips, but it's righteousness. It's peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the mother key of God. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the mother key of God. They see the mother key of the United Kingdom. It's world money and control. World money, diamonds and gold. Because kingdom is a moral kingdom. It's the love of God. I do, my friend. You okay? Hallelujah. Peace, joy, and righteousness. Justice. When the mother here, we can find justice in our day. There's no more justice. But in the kingdom of God, bad things are going to happen to good people. By the monarchy of men, bad things are happening to good people. And therefore, people are pointing a finger at God for the actions of men. But this is God. 
Yet was you are yet living in sin. Yet was you are drinking sin, eating sin, living as a pedophile, a rapist, a gambunker, a froster, a whore, a bisexual, a homosexual. Yet was you are forcing babies to be murdered. The Bible says, Yet was you are living in that lifestyle. The Bible says, Today, and it's a day of salvation. Friends in Canaveral, as I come to the end of our message, I probably want to see you again. Maybe probably to next year. Or if I come again, I'll be preaching the same gospel. Jesus is coming again, and we must repent. Jesus, the Son of God, is coming again. Jesus. That safe sinners is coming. And the Bible says he's coming with the voice of an archangel and with a trumpet, and all eyes will see him. They will see the king of glory, and they will not be Christians. They will see the king of glory, and they will not be Easter. They will see the king of glory, and it will be a day of death. But the day be the day that the Lord has made. It is a day of mercy and salvation. Therefore, God said, Come ye and drink of the wells of salvation and be saved from your sins. Come ye to the water of the word of God and be saved. Today, I can hear you, my dear friend. Yes, he has life for you. Come and receive this life by faith. He's got something for you. He's got more. He's got more than money. Eternal life is the gift. You can't live physically on that. But let me tell you, when you have Jesus, you have everything. You see, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul? See, you will lose your soul. What will it profit you? You gave the whole world. Some have knives, some have guns, but the guns can save them. They will die, leave the gun in the coffin. They will die with a gun on the hip. Money won't save you. Because money cannot buy eternal life. And that is why we give you what can buy eternal life. It's the blood of Jesus. The only thing that can remit sins, forgive sins, and pay the conscience from dead work. The only thing, which is the blood of Jesus, that can reconcile us back to God. And today, can ever, there is the A, B, C, D to receiving eternal life. Not a religion, but a relationship and a fellowship with the one true God and the third whom he has sent. Today, the end is that you are next to a sinner and call on Jesus. The B is that you believe in Jesus because he died for you and he can forgive you your sins. He believed in Jesus because he paid the debt of your sins, not your Pope, not Buddha, not Krishna, not Muhammad, not Confucius, but Jesus. The key is that you confess your sins to him, not your Pope, your vicar, because no man can remit sins or forgive sins. That is why you call upon him and you will be saved. The key is that you deny yourself. You deny yourself. See, I was a guy, the Bible said, if any man should come after me, let him deny himself and pick up his cross and follow me. I was a guy that wore the cross. And I was a thief, a prosper, a liar. I had the crosses. And, and wickedness was in my heart. See that many people have crosses. They're wearing the cross and not carrying the cross. 
Carrying the cross makes you deny yourself. That is why there are many gangsters with crosses and they sell drugs. Gangsters with crosses and they kill people. Guns hold with crosses and they still live in sexual lifestyle, homosexual, bisexual with crosses and they still live in a better lifestyle, pedophile with crosses and they still abusing children. That is why we need to carry the cross and deny ourselves and come to Him. Deny yourself and come to Jesus and you shall be saved. Today, I sound the alarm of the coming of the Lord Jesus. Jesus is coming not as a baby in a manger. He's not coming to die for sinners, but He will be coming to judge. We sound the alarm of Jesus. Pray. Today is that day. Tomorrow could be too late. Tomorrow is not promised. No, we need Jesus, my you. friend. Jesus. Trust me. <laughs> I said that once and I felt so empty. I said, F Jesus, I felt empty. As you're saying it right now, you feel empty because he has not brought any joy, nothing. You're still afraid of, you're still afraid of dying, even though you said that. You see, you're still afraid, my friend. That is why we go back to the alcohol and the drugs. But when we believe in Jesus, we don't fear no death. Because he conquered the grave. We don't fear death. Because he conquered hell. Today, my friend, it is a day of salvation. It's a call on his name. And turn away from your sins. And you shall be saved. Today, I sound the alarm. I blow the chauffeur. The frequency of repentance will remain in Canada. Repent and come to Jesus. to come to preach to somebody like you. Come, my friend. Man, being tough can save you, brother. Being a tough man can save you, bro. Life is short and eternity is long. That's why guys like you will need a knife on your hip, a gun on your life. Take more drugs. Listen, Jesus is the way. Trust me, bro. Jesus is the way. You are more, you're more courageous and bold if you believe in Jesus. Being a G can save you. Being a bad man won't save you, bro. You need to give your life to Jesus. Yeah, you need, it's not too late. Today is the day of salvation, my friend. Today is that day. It's that day for you. It's that day for him. All of you can receive the true life and be saved. Today is that day. A handshake. I'm a man of peace. I love you, brother. Jesus loves you. It's guys like you. He died for you. He died for you, friend. He loves you, bro. I want to take a picture with you. Why would you want to take a picture with me? Yes. Come and take a picture with Jesus. It's the way, bro. Your life will be Hey, let's rejoin. Let me tell you. Listen, Jesus. Turn out to Jesus. Listen. You love Jesus. Listen. It's more than that. You will obey his commandments. Today is a day of salvation. Listen, today is a day of salvation. Listen, have you heard about the gospel? Come, 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 Today is the day of salvation. Let me take a 
I'm so glad that the seed is being planted. Amen. And God is having his way. They will never forget it. Because something has been done in the realm of the spirit. And we're releasing more preachers of the gospel. And today, as I'm speaking to you, we're praying over this territory. We pray that by the blast of the shofar men, preachers come from the north, the east, the west, and begin to preach the good news of Jesus that is able to save North Wales. Can never North Wales. We pray that the frequency of repentance of awakening will be so strong in this place that men will be convicted of sin of righteousness and judgment. We pray that the Holy Ghost will minister 24-7. The Bible says in the book of John 14, when the Spirit is come, he will convict the world of sin of righteousness and judgment. And we pray that let the Spirit come. Let there be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. For an outpouring of conviction of sin of righteousness and judgment. We pray that let men begin to hate evil and run to Jesus. May they be compelled and persuaded to turn away from sin and run to Jesus. We plead the blood of the Lamb and we declare that every evil blood sprinkling that has held this city bound will be nullified by the blood of the Lamb. We declare that the gospel of his blood will bring redemption and remission of sins. We plead that the gospel of his blood will bring forgiveness of sin in this territory. Father, we give thanks and we give you glory. We give you thanks. We pray for rivers of salvation to flow in this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Salvation, we call it an end. See you soon in Jesus' name. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye.